Hi there, I am Bonnie McCaffrey and thank you so much for coming back this month. Have I got a treat for you. I am here with Paula Nadelstern at her exhibit at the American Folk Art Museum. Oh my gosh, Paula, I have been a fan of yours forever. And I've been a fan of yours, Bonnie. Well, I remember taking a class with you. It had to be 15 years ago here. It could in... have been longer. <laughs> oh my gosh, it is so, it's such a treat to be able to now see several of your works all in one space. Yeah, oh there are 19 gosh. quilts here and then 12 oh. new pieces that I just made specifically for the exhibit that are stretched and not quilted and, oh. yeah, and those I'm, I'm particularly in love with. Um, they really bring together everything that I've been teaching and talking about and writing about for the past you know, 20 years. I wanted to really revisit the whole classic centered mandala that yeah. was a kaleidoscope. Yeah. Oh my gosh. Now I love the entryway when we come in downstairs because there is a beautiful kaleidoscope moving. It looks like you're looking inside of a kaleidoscope, and a, a, a running movie. That's right. There is a, a, it's, it was done by Charles Karadimos who helped collect the kaleidoscopes that are actually in the exhibit. We have five state-of-the-art kaleidoscopes, one of which is Charles kaleidoscopes, oh. made just for the exhibit, which are hands-on. So it means everyone can come in oh. and gently turn and look. The loop that is going on, the beautiful kaleidoscopic video that's downstairs, was actually taken through the kaleidoscope that he made for this exhibit. Oh, what a great juxtaposition of the two, the actual kaleidoscopes and then you capture the illusion of what is in a kaleidoscope. Now I know you have a complex way of doing this but what always has fascinated me was the little tiny pieces of fabric that you pick out to in order to make it happen. It's just amazing and you do them on the machine right? I'm a, I'm hand, I mean I machine piece right and I don't think of myself as a very good sewer. I mean I don't um, right. I, I don't, no seriously I can't, I couldn't <laughs> You know, I, I can't make clothing, I can't put in a zipper, I can't, all I can do is sew straight. You know, many of these quilts, probably of the 19, 14 were made in, on a featherweight on my kitchen table. Since oh then, gosh. I have moved, my daughter has grown up and she lives in her own apartment down the block. And, and now you have a studio. Well, I have space. a room, that's right, I have my own space that's in a good. two bedroom apartment and I actually sew with a Bernina now, which I like very, very much. But all of my technique is explained in my, in my book, my CNT book. Paul you and have two books. I have two books out currently out right now. Mm -hmm. My Paula Nadel Stern's um, Kaleidoscope Quilts and Artist Journey Continues was the, was done really as a um, a catalog, knowing that the show was going to happen. So all the quilts. Um, are in the book um, and then there is a very nice how-to section that you know after writing I had I sort of rewrote what I had written before because with so much more information you can do it simpler though I always say the longer you work in one genre the questions you ask yourself get more and more complex but the answers get simpler so let's take a look at some of your quilts okay. let's talk about this one right here the idea really is that a kaleidoscope functions like a circle and so I take the circle, I divide it by the number of pieces of pie that I want it to be made up of. And so typically I do eight. That's, what, that's the traditional quilt. But in this case, I did 16. Oh my gosh. Because now it's very hard to make 16 pieces meet in the middle. Right. So right over here, mm -hmm. instead of um, having, I made 16 wedges, but then I sewed two together and I gave them a common okay. top. Oh. So there's a hidden seam right about here right. where only eight meet in the middle. And I hide my seams a lot. Like when I'm picking fabric, that's always my choice is what do I want to happen at the next seam? Do I want to have high contrast or do I want to continue so your right. eye does not see the seams? And that's very different from the traditional right. way a quilter will use fabric where they are doing a nine patch and want contrast at the seam. So there's lots and lots of fabrics in here, but your eye can't see where the seams are. And so... Um, and I also think it's fascinating that it looks like you have fussy cut each of these specific elements here. Well, I actually have those particular and elements. Here. Right. And, and strip two, it are all over. I divide fabric into two categories, the, the fussy cuts, which I call prima donnas, and those I have to cut specifically. Right. But then I add to that um, stripped on all overs. Right. All overs, all, all overs. Over. So you can see there's lots and of all specifics. overs. specifics. Right. So, and oh then in gosh, here, there's lots amazing. of all overs. So that's a lot of stripping. So uh, shall we take a look at another piece? Sure. Let's go. Okay. All right, I understand this is your daughter's favorite. Yes, this is my daughter's favorite. It is the view out my kitchen window. This time of year, oh. as you look down, I'm in the ninth floor looking down on the trees, and these little bits of tulips in the courtyard below, oh. in the common courtyard, are sticking, you know, are coming up through the trees. And, um, yeah. Just gorgeous. Thank you. All right, let's go see another one. Okay. 
Okay, now I'm looking at this. It certainly looks like the Brooklyn Bridge. Yes, it's called my, it's the 32nd quilt in the in my collection and my series, and it is called my Brooklyn Bridge. Oh, it is your my Brooklyn, Brooklyn Bridge. Bridge. Yes, and but you know this is a kaleidoscope exhibit, but I don't see the kaleidoscope in here. Is there one hidden? This is actually the sky. The, is a kaleidoscopic sky, and if your eye could could see, if you, right through there is the center of the kaleidoscope, and that's an eight-sided kaleidoscope, oh. so that you can see the. You would, you would see it, but I didn't want your eye to, to see that specifically. I wanted right. the bridge on top with, a, um, with all that heavy, heavy work. But what's interesting here is this, you can't really tell at first that this is made up of you know, 20, 30 fabrics because at, I've, I've camouflaged the seams. I want oh the eye gosh. to just really gently move out from the center of the kaleidoscope in, in this very soft way. And so as I come to the seams, when I make that decision, very I typically camouflage it. I typically use fabric or motif or something that will make the eye just jump across. For me, the shape is really a vehicle just to get beautiful fabric onto the, the quilt yeah, itself. Yeah, we, we like fabric. Yeah, we love, and I love complex fabric. You do. And you know what? I think your Snowflake book really covers how you've chosen fabrics to either blend yes, or separate. Yes, and that is now an e-book. You can go on my website. Even though it's been out wow. of print, it now for, uh, is now an e-book that you can get and download once, and then um, it does. It's a really good way, you're right, to, right. to understand how it is that I camouflage the seams. Right. But so is also the Puzzle Quilt Book, which is a simpler version of all of the design sensibility that I've developed, learning about kaleidoscopes, but okay. essentially it's all made up of half square triangles and squares, so it is really a very... And is that one still available, available and very a book, easy to get. a full book? A full book called Puzzle Quilts. And how about the first one? I forgot about the first one. The first book is out of print, but really the new kaleidoscope quilt book um, right. continues and, refer and explains okay. everything even better. All right, let's go see some more. Okay, we found another gorgeous piece. Now, what's the name of this one? This quilt is called Shards. It's actually the um, last quilt that I made. It took about two years, very complex quilt. Oh and um, these are all, all these fabrics are straight lines. This is all faux, fake circles. I can't sew a circle. I know. Um, so I have a different, a different way of doing this. So, and the idea here is that the kaleidoscopes, as if they were made and then cracked and then put back together. So yeah. in order to do this, you know, here you can see that I had to make extra to include the seam allowance to, uh, um, so oh. that your eye feels as if there's just pieces of crowd that have been placed inside. But oh in order to figure gosh. that out, that was real complex. Pretty um, cool. And then I did my very first machine quilting on this just uh, with a walking foot and just zoomed and went and I'm mostly okay. hand quilting. And so how, far, how, how hard was that? I'm very happy that no one can see the back. Yes, we're going to have them show her late. No, no. <laughs> <laughs> Just kidding. Okay, let's go look at another one. Okay. okay, so tell me about this beautiful piece, Paula. This quilt is eight, has eight wedges. It is inspired by a, um, a tree grate that was on 57th and 7th Avenue, not too far from here. Oh. I saw it as an actual kaleidoscope because it, it has all of this metal grating yeah. in, in regular ways. And so this is all stripped together. Now that is the main wedge. So right. there's eight wedges and that's how it's put together and right. then I didn't see what it was going to look like until I put it all together. But these all over fabrics, there are different fabrics, all of which I collected in the garment district, in, uh, mostly at B&J. In that in the garment, Yes. yes. Where, you know, over the years. And so none of these are fussy cuts. It's just, and so they just gradually move, move, move. Although yeah. this fabric is a piece of um, oh. fabric that I bought in Japan, a uh, obi, uh, you know, just about that long. Yeah. And so that has found its way into many of my quilts, that beautiful Gorgeous. obi fabric. Let's go look at another one. Okay. Okay, well, this is one of my favorites, and I love how there's kind of a shift and a spinning out and movement to yeah, it. Yeah, this was a hard quilt because it, I couldn't make the identical wedge over and over again in order to get that spiral effect. Oh. And so I actually had to draw it to scale um, and then make templates for every single piece. So oh. it was, for a smallish piece, it did take quite a, quite a while. Yeah. Before, I had my own fabric collection, so I was really trying to get that sense of luminosity. It is based on a Charles Karadimos kaleidoscope, an actual spiraling image of a wow. kaleidoscope. And I love your fabrics. I just think you're a genius. You just keep coming up with more beautiful things and the yeah, kaleidoscope fabric is just stunning. Okay, this piece here, while it, it's not quite as round and kaleidoscopic, I Well, it is kaleidoscopic. A kaleidoscope functions with the mirror systems. Typically, there are three mirrors, and if the image is reflects in three mirrors, it goes off into infinity. If, if they mask one of the mirrors, you get a two-mirror system, which is like a mandala, which is what I do. Okay. And then very often, the kaleidoscope make, will make four mirrors, and this is a four-mirror system. Oh, so that's okay. Its, which, which in the kaleidoscope world, we call a chorus line, because it's as if all the pieces of glass are kicking their legs at the same time. I love so it. in this case, um, this is called Big Red Chorus Line, and the, the, it, although it is 
put a skew, the seam is coming down like that, and then the next right. one's right here. So this is a, a, a right, and then this is the left, and this is a right, meaning the templates are face up, and then they're face down, and then they're face up, and then they're face down. Oh and so in gosh. some ways it was a rather simple piece. It's really on graph paper, a 30 inch by eight inch. Yeah, uh, but rectangle. stunning, just stunning. I love it. Thank you. Stunning. Hey, let's go take a look at another one. Okay, good. This quilt is just stunning. Tell me about this one. Well, this quilt was on the list of the 100 best quilts of the century. I'm very honored and very proud. Absolutely. And because um, this exhibit meant, means so much to me, the faith that the museum has in me to mount an exhibit like this, I have donated this quilt um, to the American Aww. Folk Art Museum. And I know it will have a very, very good home and that they, you know, understand how important it is to our quilt making legacy. So I'm very proud. Right, and so um, if they came when this exhibit was not up, they might get to see it. Yes, and I believe it will neat. be in a, um, a Rizzoli book that's being done of the museum's collection. But before I mentioned how in the previous quilt, I had, um, I had for the first time done an off-centered, um, you know, because the longer you work in one, in one motif, you, in one genre, you get more and more ideas and you have time to explore right. it. I think the best gift I ever gave myself was working in a series and I did that unknowingly. At first it was going to be just one quilt. But this is actually the same you know, crescent right. shape over here. Right. And so these kaleidoscopic wedges just oh, work right. all the way out. And that is one thing I love about your book, is that it tells you how you did it, and it also tells a little story of where you were in that part of your life, which I think is yeah, really but fascinating. With, with these really great images of the whole quilt and details, C&T did a very, very beautiful job. They did. It's a gorgeous catalog. Thanks. And if you get a chance to come into New York City, this exhibit is here until... Until September 13th on Excellent. 53rd Street. On 53rd Street at the American Folk Art Museum. So you'll Between 5th and 6th Avenue. Between 5th and 6th Avenue. Real easy to find. I found it pretty easily. And on Friday evenings, oh, a free, they have great music and it's open free to the public from 5.30 to 7.30. So it's really a nice Sunday, Saturday, Friday night, excuse me, Friday night evening in New York City. That is so much fun, I think. It is. Come on in and see her exhibit. And if you can't do that, we'll buy the catalog and you can see all of her wonderful quilts. Thanks, Bonnie. I want to throw you a little bit of a curve. Oh, no. I am. I'm going to do it. I want to know, can you tell me what your life philosophy is? Um, you can have it all. You just can't have it all at the same time. I love that. Thank you so much for doing <laughs> this with me. <laughs> and thank you all for coming. And I hope you'll come back next month and see what I have for you then. Thanks for being with me.